Just for allowing us another Saturday together around the family of Christ, but also around this room. So we end Psalm 51 as we have read, and we take note of the psalmist as he repents, as he pleads, and as also he has his desire to be purged from his sin. And he also acknowledges that his sin was against God. And he turns to God and asks him for forgiveness and mercy. And the psalm that we'll be looking into this morning is Psalm 32. Just as you guys are turning there to Psalm 32, I'll give a brief little background on Psalm 32. So Psalm 32 was written by King David. And studies, studies show that it's read after Psalm 51. And it's a beautiful psalm of forgiveness and mercy. And we see here the answer prayer of our psalms. As he confesses, pleaded with God to wash him clean, to purge him from his iniquities, God answers the psalmist's prayer in this psalm. The psalm is known as the joy of forgiveness, but it's also known as a psalm of contemplation or a mascal. Now that term mascal means a psalm, a poem, or a song, but it can also be an instructive psalm as well. Now, the vision of the psalm goes as follows. Verses 1 to 2 is the benediction or the blessing of the psalmist. Verses 3 to 5 is David's personal confession. Verses 6 to 7 is the application for others. Verses 8 to 9 is God's voice is heard by the forgiven. And verses 10 to 11 is the comparison between the wicked and the upright. So can I have our Psalmon Bible readers, please? Uh, read from Faikuku Mumua Irelu, and if I can ask our new, new King James uh, Bible readers to read from verses 1 and 2. So, someone Bible readers, please. Iya. <laughs> <coughs> Our new King James Bible readers, please, verses 1 and 2. Either, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquities, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now these two verses start off with the word blessed. And reading these two verses reminds me of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Jesus' famous sermon. As he opens up there as well. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And this is found in Matthew 5 verses 3 to 10. And even in Psalm chapter 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man. So these two verses will be the main theme of the psalm. So we start in verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now keeping in mind that this is a result of the confession from Psalm 51. In Psalm 51 we have seen David cry and plead as, as we read in Psalm 51. Have mercy on me. And a happy and joyful transition from have mercy on me to blessed is he. And this is not only in writing. This transition we see take place but also we read it throughout the psalm that God had mercy over David and, is, and answered his prayer. Therefore David says blessed is he. Notice there that the blessing is towards the lawbreaker not to the self-righteous lawkeeper. If indeed the blessings are given to the lawkeeper then by no means will be able to attain such things. Self-righteousness has no room for blessings as they are consumed with the things of themselves. Instead, it's given to the lawbreaker. The lawbreaker who goes off and wanders off, does whatever he wants, sins against God, lives in rebellion against God. But once he realizes his own sin, he confesses towards the Lord. He cries out to them, like our psalmist in Psalm 51. But then we also think like the prodigal son as well in Luke 15, 11 to 32. And also the thief on the cross in Luke 23, 39 to 43. 
There is happiness in joy in one's forgiveness and one's mercy. For the prodigal son, there was a response of dancing, happiness, and celebrating. For the thief on the cross, we can only assume that there was happiness and joy as he hears the very words of Jesus. I surely I say unto you, today you'll be with me in paradise. For our psalmist this morning, there is happiness and joy as he has written in his opening verse. Blessed is he. Now just what does this lawbreaker get for confessing his sin? Or what is the blessings that he receives? As we observe the text, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Now how joyful and happy, happy is to have this news given to the lawbreaker. The celebration of knowing and believing that your transgressions are forgiven. How good of a news that is to those who are lost. How good of a news that is to those who are living in sin. That the confession of the psalms has been answered. And we know that by this verse. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. The happiness and joy one must have to know that this burden or weight can be lifted through forgiveness and mercy. And the fogginess of shame and guilt is released through these words. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Now may we never just limit the happiness to the forgiveness of sin. But we see that there is happiness in trusting the Lord. And also in obeying the word of the Lord. And we'll, we will see that in these following passages. If I can have our English Bible readers please turn to Psalm chapter 1 verse 1. Asamon Bible readers, salamu mua mua, fai upu mua mua. And if I can have our English Bible readers, please read Psalm 1 verse 1. And then I'll have our Samoan Bible readers uh, read after. Our English Bible readers, please, Psalm 1 verse 1. Iya. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Our Samoan Bible readers, please. Iya. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our next one is Psalm 40, verse 4. Psalm 30, verse 4. Salam Fasiful Fai Upufa. I will read in English. And if I can have our Samoan Bible readers, please uh, read after. Psalm 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Our Samoan Bible readers, please. Iya. Our last one is Psalm 119, verse 2. Psalm 119, verse 2. If I can ask our Psalm Bible readers this time to read uh, first, and then I'll have our New King James Bible readers uh, read after. Psalm 119, verse and Our English Bible readers, please. Iya. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. Praise the Lord. So we see the different signs <coughs> and the many usage of the word happy or blessed. So again, let us, brothers and sisters, not limit the blessings of our Lord to the, or the happiness, limit it to the forgiveness of sin, but also have it for the obeying of the word and the trusting of his word. Now, our psalmist ends verse 1 with these words. Whose sin is covered. May it be, believer, that we have our sins concealed in the living God through his gracious son, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross. Oh, indeed, how blessed is the man whose sin is not accounted to him, whose unable, whose unable, whose unable debt is to telestai, 
is paid in full. This is the happiness that the lawbreaker receives, forgiveness from sins, transgressions, and iniquity. These words, these three words, forgiveness of sin, transgression, and iniquity, show the depravity and rebellion of our sons. But also, these words have no match for the concealing forgiveness of such trespasses. The happiness one may have to know their sin is covered and to stand firm in truth, as the psalmist says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. But only God in his goodness can cover the multitude of our sins and trespasses. And we consider the following passage, Psalm 85, verse 2. Psalm 85, verse 2. Salamu vanulima fai upulua. I'll read in English if I can ask our Psalm Bible readers, please, to read up. Psalm 85, verse 2. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. Now, Psalm Bible readers, please. Iya. So we see in the scripture God covering again all sin. But in this context, some of the studies show that this was a time when the Jews were returning from exile in Babylon. Now only God through his son Jesus Christ can give this lawbreaker happiness or joy, liberty and celebration. As the psalmist writes out, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now we move on to verse 2. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquities, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. David in verse 2 describes how the forgiveness and covering of sin is done. As it reads there, blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquities. Now how justly are we together with our psalmist if the Lord judges us guilty and punishes us for our sins? How righteous is the Lord who is blameless to condemn us to face eternal wrath? How holy is our Lord if we were to earn the wages of our sins. But blessed is the lawbreaker, who the law does not impute iniquities on him. Now the word impute comes from the word hashev, and that means to account, to plan, or to charge. How blessed is the man who does not have to pay the wages of his sin, where the blessed man can stand and shout to tell us that, again, paid in full, free from debt. Blessed is the man who has a substitute to stand for him, to whose account all his debt may be set down. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquities. And we see the grace of our Lord evident in the New Testament, that he does not impute our sins onto us, but onto himself, paying our unpayable debt. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. If I can have our New King James Bible readers, please read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And then I'll have our Samoan Bible readers, please uh, read after. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, our New King James. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Our Samoan Bible readers, please. Luo Karinito Lima, Fai Upulua Sifulutasi. Iya. Awa oya na mehole amasala, na faya lehe ya maasala, na ususuye itatso, ina ya ve itatso ma miyoso mwale etsuwa ya zeya. Our next one was 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19. 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 19. I'll read in English, and if I can ask our Samoan Bible readers, please, to read from Luo Corinito Lima, by Upu Sefulu 2 Corinthians 5, 19. This is what it reads. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, Samoan Bible readers, please. Iya. 
And our last one is Romans 5 13. Roma Lima Roma Lima Five If I can have our English Bible readers please read from Romans chapter 5 verse 13. And then I'll have our Samoan Bible readers to read after. Our English Bible readers, please. E, yeah. For until the Lord's sin was in the world, world but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Our, in, our Samoan Bible readers, please. E, yeah. <coughs> Blessed is the man who lives in the liberty of grace and no longer weighed down <coughs> by trying or trying to keep the law or live righteous, self righteously. As David says, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose receipt says, To tell us thy, paid in full. The garment of sin and shame, unholiness, ungodly living is removed and imputed unto us. Onto the blessed man or onto the lawbreaker is the righteousness found only in Christ. Mm -hmm. Psalm 32, verse 2 continues, In whose spirit there is no deceit. The blessed man lives and deals honestly with his sin and with God. He is honest with himself and leaves no room for self righteousness or hypocrisy. Observe Psalm 51, a psalm of confession. Our psalmist is honest with, the, with his sin and with God. He turns to God alone and pleads with God. Living a life of hypocrisy leaves no room to receive the blessedness of forgiveness and mercy. The genuine repentance of King David in Psalm 51 is answered by forgiveness and mercy. As we read in Psalm 32. Therefore, the genuine happiness and joy is offered up to God in worship and in praise. Now what does that mean for us today? Our application comes from the second verse of Psalm 32, whose spirit there is no deceit. May we as believers continue to examine ourselves according to God's word. May we deal honestly and genuinely with God with regards to our sin and not hide anything from him. As God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, only then we can stand with David and say, Blessed is he whose sin, whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquities and in whose spirit there is no deceit. I would invite everyone to stand as I hand it over to Pastor Vai Vai, who will lead us in a time of worship. Thanks to